Good evening guys, uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes, former head of the Electrical Engineering Department of certain college uh, somewhere in Asia. Okay, uh, let's proceed. <clears throat> My topic tonight will be, this is lesson number 70 on my channel on the topic integral calculus the topic is volume and the method is hollow cylinder method right circular cylinder using horizontal rotation the concentration of the topic tonight will be it is a solution using right uh, hollow cylinder method but the rotation should be along the horizontal. The last example was uh, rotated along the vertical line. So we will try to solve the problem and we will try to bring out the, the right formula okay, by using a horizontal rotation. The result should be the same. Okay, uh, problem. Derive the volume of a right circular cylinder using the hollow cylinder method rotated along the x-axis, uh, x meaning horizontal rotation. Okay, uh, to bring out the figure, uh, we draw the Cartesian coordinate system. This is the y-axis, x-axis, uh, frontal view of the right circular cylinder. Uh, it seems just only straight lines okay but if you try to see the isometric view it will be a different thing you know on the cartesian coordinate system we you are only seeing seeing uh, horizontal and vertical lines so they should be the they should be the cylinder okay uh, i place the cylinder to be symmetrical with respect to the x-axis Meaning, the center line of the cylinder is at the middle. Okay? So, one half of the cylinder is on top of the X line, X axis, and one half of the cylinder is below the X axis. Such that, when we try to rotate it, okay, it will be symmetrical when we rotate it. Okay? Okay, uh, let's now draw the horizontal slice. This is the horizontal slice. The distance of this horizontal slice with respect to the axis of rotation is y. That's actually the radius. Uh, it, it's designated by y. The thickness of this slice is dy. Uh, on the horizontal slice, it could either is that uh, when uh, dy moves, it could either be constant or variable thing. It depends on the situation. But for a horizontal cylinder, uh, I said, uh, luckily, uh, XR and XL are actually constant. So we are just lucky for this problem, but other problems we will not be lucky, you know. Okay? So this is XR, this is XL. And if we try to bring out the isometric view of the cylindrical thing, when we try to rotate it along the x-axis, this should be the isometric view. Okay, this is supposed to be the x-axis. We try to rotate the horizontal slice. Okay, one complete revolution. So as an isometric view, that will be the isometric view. This is the center line of the hollow cylinder. And the distance from the center up to this is actually y. The radius. It's a variable radius. It could either be constant or variable. But in here, we designate it as y. And the thickness of the slice, when we rotate it, it is dy. Why dy? Uh, this is dy. It is along the vertical line. It is dy. And this length here is actually the height of the cylinder. And the, this length here is actually xr minus xl. It depends. If they are constants, no problem. If they are variable, okay, just take the difference. But in general, the altitude of the cylinder should be as it moves from the original zero limit to the upper limit, it should be XR minus XL. This is a general thing. 
Ang general thing meaning, uh, if it is a constant, no problem. If it is a variable, no problem. Just follow this one. Okay, uh, if we try to cut this one now, and we try to spread out, the resulting configuration will be like this. Okay, this length here will be the circumference of the hollow cylinder. And the circumference is 2 pi y. 2 pi times its radius. Its radius from the center is y, so this is times y. The thickness is dy, and this is actually h. h is actually xr minus xl. Meaning, <coughs> as uh, dy moves from this uh, zero point up to r, okay, there should be an xr and xl as it moves. But for the cylinder, it does not vary. They are both constant. Uh, so we are just lucky for this problem. Okay, uh, we now try to set up the depression volume. The volume, the pressure volume of this one now will be circumference times thickness times height. Okay, circumference times height is actually this area. Sorry, sorry for this one guys. I will try to cross hatch the area when we try to spread it out. Okay. This area here is actually this length here times this. So it's actually circumference times height. And to take the volume, multiply that by the thickness. So this is multiplied by dy. It is this. So you can visualize it. Therefore, uh, this will now be 2 pi y times dy times uh, the height. As dy moves, uh, the height should be either constant or variable. So this should be represented by xr minus xl. But xr is actually h and xl is equal to 0. How do I know this? It is from analytic geometry. The equation of the, this uh, line here, okay, is xr equal to h. This distance is h. It's the height of the cylinder. And the equation of the xl, xl, xl. xl is also a vertical line. And luckily, uh, xl coincides with the y-axis. Therefore, xl is equal to zero. So this is actually h minus zero. Okay. I bring out the solution using some knowledge of analytic geometry. Without knowing your analytic geometry, you cannot bring out this one. That's not calculus. It's analytic geometry. That's why I told you, uh, calculus, uh, you know, the requirement is that uh, you know the lower mathematics. So this is now 2 pi y dy times h minus 0 or differential volume will be 2 pi h y dy. This is differential equation. That is uh, actually our next topic. Because we finished differential calculus, integral calculus. The next topic, uh, the next main topic is actually differential equation. So at least you, you now have an idea what is a differential equation. So actually after multiplying all this one, uh, what comes out is a differential equation. Differential volume is equal to 2 pi h y dy. And to compute for the volume, we integrate both sides. Okay? Why we integrate? Oh, that's integral calculus. That's why we, the topic is integral calculus. Integral of the differential volume equal to the integral from 0 to y, r rather, 2 pi h y dy. Why the lower limit is 0? The lower limit should be this y here, the y over here. The y over here is 0. Okay? And the upper limit should be this one. Y here should be R. This is R. This is zero. Y here is zero. Y is zero, it is uh, on the horizontal line. Y, uh, y is equal to R to this point here. 
Because to cover up the total, total half volume, the dy should move from 0 to r. That's why our limit on the integration on the right hand side is 0 to r. Okay? Uh, that's another thing also. It's easy to integrate, but if you don't know how to take your lower and upper limit, you're gone. Okay? Therefore, volume now will be equal to 2 pi h. h is constant. 2 pi is constant. It's, uh, it's outside the integral side. And the integral of y dy, power formula. This is y squared over 2 with the limit from 0 to 1. Volume now will be 2 pi h. Upper limit, r squared over 2 minus 0. And uh, these two here cancel with this. So what comes out for the volume of the right circular cylinder using the hollow cylinder method when that hollow cylinder is to be rotated along the x-axis, the volume is still the same. The volume, the formula for taking the volume, it is still the same. Pi r square h. Where the lower limit is 0, upper limit is r. What's the significance of my topic to, uh, tonight, guys? The significance is that whether uh, you rotate the cylindrical area along the y-axis or x-axis, the required derived formula will still be the same. That's the significance. So on your solutions and on your exams, it's up to you if you use the horizontal rota rotation or the vertical rotation. The result should be the same, but you should know how to grab your figure correctly on the Cartesian coordinate system. If you do not know how to grab it, because that's a part of analytic geometry. Okay, guys. Good evening.